Hello and welcome to another AIC video. I love laptops. You can't tell by watching my channel. I absolutely, they're some of my favorite things in the world. And I actually have probably pretty close to 20 laptops in my personal inventory. And so whenever I get a chance to look at a new one, I absolutely jump on that opportunity. And once again, Lenovo has been amazing and given me the opportunity to check this out. This is a Lenovo ThinkPad T14S Gen 6. So it is one of their newest laptops they have available. I've never tested the S variant of a T series. I've done like the P14S, which I don't think really, it counts in the P line, but not for the other lines. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at it and see what you get with this particular model. A previous video I did, I did a hardware showcase of this laptop. And like most S variants over the years, you get give up a lot of upgradability for the sake of it being smaller and lighter. However, the build quality is excellent. And with the specs that this laptop is configured with, I don't think it's an issue. For the target audience of this machine, we are rocking a Ryzen AI 7 Pro 360, 32 gigs of RAM, which should be sufficient for anybody using this laptop for at least three to five years. Typically, these are gonna be set up in an office situation, under warranty from Lenovo. Storage is replaceable, but I don't think that's most that's something that most users of this laptop will worry about. It does have one terabyte of storage. The materials of this laptop are pretty high grade. It looks and feels fantastic. I know some people would, would prefer to have an all aluminum chassis or having other colors available, but that just doesn't fit with the ThinkPad, ThinkPad vibe. The materials are premium, both in look and feel. Flashy colors would just make it look dated quickly, and aluminum would make it heavier and easier to dent and scratch. I had to get a cover for my MacBook Air to keep it from looking like junk after not a lot of use. If this was my laptop, I would get a vinyl skin for it, personally, but that's just because I like to leave a lot of fingerprints behind uh, all my systems, and all of my systems I re use regularly get a vinyl skin. Performance of this machine is quite impressive. Better than something with a 28 watt TDP and an integrated GPU should be. It struggled in some games like Hogwarts Legacy. Sometimes I'd get as much as 80 frames a second and others are dropped down to single digits. Other games like Rocket League and Fall Guys ran at, a nearly, ran at nearly 50 frames per second without issue. Uh, Right here we have GTA 5 running a benchmark, hitting easily 30 to 31 frames a second at full FPS, and or excuse me, full resolution, and looks great. So definitely significantly better than I would expect from a non-gaming laptop to, to do. Now I'm going to leave the benchmark running while I talk about the next couple of things. Uh, first thing is, I went on Reddit and I asked people kind of what their questions were uh, about this machine before I went ahead and did this video. So that way I could try to give people a chance to ask me questions that I can answer in the video. And I really only got two questions. And the first one really wasn't even a question. It was more of a complaint. Uh, people complain about the keyboard. Uh, honestly, I don't get it. Yes, it is a different keyboard than think pads of 20 years ago. But they're still a great keyboard, especially compared to anything else on the market that I've tested. And I personally have no complaints at all. If you have a problem with this keyboard, it's probably a personal issue that you should seek professional help for. My only real complaint is after over a decade of using ThinkPads, the fact that they have switched the function and control keys uh, drives me a little bit nuts because my pinky knows what it's supposed to do and the keys aren't in the right place anymore. Uh, though I've, I've started to get over that with my P1, which has the keys in the same place. The second question I got asked, and really the main question I got asked, was fan noise and temperatures. As you can see, we have the GPU running up here, which is also the CPU temperature. It might be a little bit hard to see, but it is running at 60 to, or 59 to 60 degrees while doing a video game benchmark. I have no problems with the heat on this system when doing any kind of normal workload. Did get a little bit hot during synthetic benchmarks, yes, but every laptop I 
uh, test gets similar temperatures, it'll peak at that 90 to 95 degrees and then immediately come right off of that again. As far as uh, the noise of the fan, it, yes, it does run and I can just about hear it. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and hold the computer up to the camera. And yeah, I can hear it barely, barely. And it's running, but I can't hardly hear it. It's not loud at all. It doesn't have any kind of annoying high pitched noise or anything like that. It's just a whooshing sound with it running. Now, I do agree with some people that a brand new machine should not have the fan running all the time. And I'm wondering, and this is just speculation on my part, so don't take this as gospel. My P1, for example, when I first got it, ran kind of on the hotter side, and the fans kind of ran all the time unless I put it in battery saver mode. There's been a couple of updates recently, both with firmware and GPU drivers, that have made it almost silent unless I am running uh, you know a game or uh, some other high performance uh, system or application so I'm wondering if it's just that they need to finish off some of that firmware or drivers to quiet it down maybe but to me personally I work in my home office I don't know if you can hear it but it's 100 degrees outside so I have my AC running I also have uh, a NAS uh, for my file share I have a server it's in the other room but it's still there I can't hear this laptop over just the general baseline noise in my office and I if I were to take this to my work office again I would never hear it it's so quiet that uh, yeah again the fan is running I recognize that it's running but I don't hear it over the ambient noise in the place I'm in. If I was working in a very quiet space, could I see that that would be annoying? Yes. But that to me personally would not be necessarily a deal breaker. That, that, that's each their own. So it would not be the reason I wouldn't buy this laptop. I like to talk for a second about the screen. The screen on this laptop is amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and run that benchmark again, just so we can see just how good it looks. But I love that the industry is going to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio from the 16 by nine. You get a lot of a lot more vertical real estate going from four by three to 16 by nine was a was a downgrade you got less physical screen for a similar size uh, similar size of screen you know measurement and you get a lot less of the screen to use for things like productivity and, and websites and things like that especially like on a book and stuff we we read left to right but on a screen we really go from top to bottom and I get why they did it when LCD TVs came out and everybody was making screens. It was just the cheaper option. It was a popular option, but it was also the cheaper option. And I think this is a really good push in the right direction. I don't think we'll ever go back to a full uh, four by three just because we do so much media on our computers that it really letterboxes those, that media, uh, streaming media and stuff like that. But I feel like the 16 by 10 is a good compromise between the two. Uh, as you can see, the screen looks great. The colors are amazing. Uh, the contrast uh, from dark to, to light is also really, really good. The I don't want to get another copyright strike, so I'm not going to play you any audio. I apologize for that. But the speakers continue to get better on ThinkPads. For years, they were pretty trash. And even for basics like video calls where you're trying to hear somebody talk, they were almost unusable. And I always went and grabbed my headphones. But now they're great even for media playback. These ones don't have the, the bass or the uh, 
stage that my P1 has, but that's a bigger laptop and bigger physical speakers, higher wattage speakers, I believe. But these ones are good. You're not going to be disappointed with them. They're not as good as my MacBook Airs, but you know, Macs have really good speakers in them. So, but they're good. Not not amazing, but definitely good. One thing I don't necessarily like about this laptop is the keyboard. As you can see, it is just integrated into the top plate. And so if you have a problem with the keyboard at all, it's going to be more difficult to replace. You're not replacing it from the top. You're going to be replacing it from the bottom. Uh, that's one of the big differences between this and the non S T series is there is some construction differences. And that is one of them. I know on the, at least on the gen fives, the keyboard was replaceable from the top on the T 14. So the big three things on laptops tip, typically need to be repaired. You have your keyboard, you have your screen and you have your charging port. Again, this does have the USB-C charger, which I do appreciate them because of the universality of it. I can charge about three quarters of my laptops from a USB-C port. Even my P1 that has a dedicated charging port can charge from the USB-C and it makes it super easy and convenient. However, if the USB-C port, which is kind of a delicate port, especially on something like a laptop, ever gets broken, it is not easy to fix and replace. I haven't looked into replacing the screen on this one at all. If it's anything like the other ThinkPads I've had to do, the bezel is glued or installed with an adhesive tape, and it's a pretty big pain to remove without damaging the bezel. So that's something that Lenovo definitely could improve on, in my opinion. The battery life of this system is pretty crazy for a ThinkPad. I get, I got about eight to nine hours on testing with this system. I do throw that in battery saver mode, but I do turn the screen brightness up all the way because I'm now getting older and my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So a full brightness on the screen, battery saver mode, eight to nine hours easily. Probably could have done better than that, but I, you know, I do a lot of testing and things like that. So a more typical workload where I'm just remoting into other systems and some web browsing, probably get better battery life than that. As far as ports go, on the left side are two USB type C's, have uh, HDMI, have a microphone jack. On the right side, two USB type A's. I would have liked to have seen a SD card reader on here, a micro SD card reader. That is something I still use quite a bit. Uh, I have a 3D printer and transferring files to that via the uh, micro SD card uh, would have been really nice instead of having to use the really cheap adapters I'm, I've been using. A comment on my last video, somebody mentioned about it not having a, an ethernet port and it being an issue in three different instances, being able to pixie boot for initial configuration, configuring network gear, and when not, Wi-Fi is not available, but wired networking is. Uh, for the pixie issue, you can actually create a bootable USB for Windows that uh, can install the Wi-Fi drivers and you can install the, you do like a runtime and then it will pull from your Pixie server and install Windows and all your configurations and everything. So I don't really think that's that big of an issue. Uh, as far as the network gear, a USB dongle. I mean, they, they work great. I have one that I've had for years and it's never, it's been able to always do that kind of stuff for me. And honestly, when was the last time you were somewhere where you had access to ethernet, but not Wi-Fi. I remember that being in like hotel rooms and stuff like 15 years ago, but I can't remember the last time I was at where there was ethernet, but no Wi-Fi. So as far as like my final opinions on this laptop, it's a great laptop. I don't think it's necessarily the laptop for me. The big reason for that is as I mentioned a minute, moment ago, I'm getting older, my eyes aren't as good, and I have really come to enjoy the 16-inch screen of my P1. A little spoiled there. Uh, I've always loved 14-inch screens. They've always been my go-to up until just this last year. This is a great screen, and it's not too small, honestly. If you don't really care about upgrading your laptop after the fact, or if this is a work computer that you're providing to an end user, 
I think this is a great laptop and it really targets a particular market. I think if you're a Mac user who's used to not having upgradable systems and you want a good screen and good speakers and you just want it to work and be a nice, well-built machine for a fraction of the cost for similar specs, I think that this is that great entry into PC computers, ThinkPads. Uh, it, it really does scratch that itch that my MacBook Air does as far as just of how good of a laptop it is, but it's not a Mac. And so it gets amazing battery life. It has amazing performance. It's really not all as, as, as that expensive. I won't say a price, just because prices change all the time, especially depending on where you're at. But as far as prices go, I think for the specs, it's pretty reasonable. And so, um, you know, definitely a great choice. So if you're looking to move from Max over, this might be one of the ones I suggest you look at. And if you just need a computer to work and you're not worried too much about upgradability down the road or whatever, spec this out as you think you'll need it. And I think you'll be pretty happy with it. Anyways, if you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, leave those down in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.